So we can move on to part two, and we will start um, with Liz Canuel. From VIMS. Okay. So I, I just want to start by acknowledging my collaborators and also to invite you all to our poster tomorrow afternoon. So I, I, I'm viewing this lightning talk as sort of a sneak preview of our poster. Um, so uh, We've been working at two marshes in the Chesapeake Bay system, Taskinus Creek in Virginia and the Kirkpatrick Marsh up in Maryland. And uh, I'm going to focus primarily in the lightning talk on the Taskinus results, where we have a, a long time series beginning in October 2013 into the, the present. Um, over this time frame, we've been measuring carbon pool carbon pool measurements over a 25-hour tidal cycle where we collect water samples every 2.5 hours about once per month. And we've been measuring DOC, DIC, and POC concentrations. We've also been measuring uh, various proxies for organic carbon source, such as chlorophyll, C to N ratios, stable isotope values. And then on high and low tides, we've been looking at the lipid biomarker composition of the POC. So uh, this is what our time series data look like. Um, and, and I'm showing concentrations, not fluxes here. So on the top, we have POC, in the middle, DOC, and on the bottom, DIC. And th so this is one measurement per month, and you're seeing the range of concentrations that we measure over that one tidal cycle. So a, a couple of takeaways. Um, when we sort of analyze the data for seasonal patterns, we find higher concentrations of POC during spring and summer and higher concentrations of DIC during fall. We were unable to detect seasonality in the DOC <coughs> concentration data. Over tidal cycles, we find higher concentrations of POC at high tide versus low tide. And this sort of is suggesting to us that the estuary is the source for the POC. It, in contrast, for DIC, we ha find higher concentrations at low tide relative to high tide, suggesting that the marsh may be a source of DIC. And we were not able to detect um, tidal differences in the DOC patterns. One thing I'd like you to take note of is the size of the range on each of these tidal cycles and the fact that tidal variation is often as great and even sometimes greater than the seasonal variation you know, at the site. Um, we also did the, some lipid biomarker data um, composition of the POC and here I'm just showing one graph from that work. Come to the poster to see more. But what I'd like you to uh, take away from this is that the lipid biomarker information is consistent with the temporal patterns, also suggesting that the fatty acids come from an estuarine source. Uh, the, the dominant sources of the fatty acids were these short chain fatty acids that come from aquatic microbes. But we also found relatively abundant contributions from C18 fatty acids that come from marsh plants and algal sources. So these data here are showing a comparison of low tide in the open bars and high tide concentrations in the, in the filled bars. And generally, um, we see that high tide and low tide were somewhat similar, or we were unable to um, detect st statistical differences. Um, but this is a, a relatively preliminary data set, not quite as extensive as our, our other data set. Um, so finally, what I want to do is kind of talk about having like a holistic big picture. So instead of looking at paired uh, combinations of variables, we've been moving into the use of structural equation modeling in, in recently. And this allows us to look at both direct and indirect effects of different variables on, in this case, POC um, concentration. 
So the, the black arrows are showing positive relationships and the thickness of the arrow is the strength of the relationship. The red arrows give negative relationships. And so the takeaway from this preliminary model is that POC uh, concentration is largely uh, driven by total suspended solid concentrations, chlorophyll A concentrations, and pheophyton concentrations. But also, I want you to take note of the big effect of tidal processes. And in, I've just called this tide, but it's actually rising tide and high tides here. And you can see that while there's not a direct arrow to POC from tide, that the tide has an indirect on POC concentration as mediated through its effects on chlorophyll and total suspended solids. So come to the poster to see more. Thank you.